And we'll turn your Bibles to the book of John in the 15th chapter. We want to talk to you a little bit this morning and try to bring a thought or two into your mind about uh, I am. Amen. And uh, uh, ever thought upon this word, you see it so many times in the Bible. And uh, it has a great meaning. So we'll see, we'll talk about that just a little bit this morning. Hope that you'll get a blessing out of it. Pray for us as we try to teach. Uh, I appreciate Brother Jared uh, risking me with this lesson. I, I hope that uh, you'll have a good day down in the place he's preaching. So this morning in chapter 15, verse 1 of John, he says, I am the true vine, Amen. and my father is the <coughs> husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Amen. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Amen. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my works abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here in this, here in this, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Amen. We'll read just a little bit more. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you, continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Amen. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye might that you that my that my joy might be remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So we have quite a lengthy reading, but I wanted to get to all that in because it it uh, helps with this uh, lesson here. But we want to see this morning as we start in verse one. He says, "I am." The true vine. Now, Amen. if you'll look over in the book of, uh, of uh, Exodus, and in the 13th chapter, I believe it is, there, uh, Moses, when God had called Moses to come and lead his people out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. the people wouldn't listen to him. They were, they were everything but uh, true followers mm -hmm. and God got I mean and, and Moses got so upset that he went to God and God said to them him you lead these people and you t you're going to take them out and he said but God who do I tell them brought me or, or sent me and God told him he says you tell them I am that I am has sent you. Amen. And so he, he did, and that, that's what he told. And so here we see this I am, which is a typifying Jesus here. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Now this hu uh, husbandman is the wine dresser, and he's, he's, he's sort of getting all of this around by uh, 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 telling them, the way that a vineyard is taken care of. Right. Now, uh, uh, I wanted to say something else, but it's done slip me. But anyway, uh, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he 
purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. Now we, we see here this morning that he's talking about a grapevine, but also he's saying about himself and about his father. And notice your every branch in me, and that is the ones that are, are, are saved, those are, that are living for him, they're trying to do, with, do for him. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now notice this branch is grafted in to the, uh, to the vine. And so he's talking about saved people because uh, we cannot get, get by without saying this, that so many people teach opposite of once saved, always saved. Mm -hmm. and they'll say that you can sin and sin and do so as that you fall from grace, but you can get forgiveness and come back. Well, we know that that's not right because right. once God saves you, once you're saved, you're saved with an everlasting salvation. Amen. And this, this, this morning is a very important thing especially for the younger people that have not experienced salvation and for those that have ex accepted salvation or received salvation. Listen, there will be, if you live long upon this earth, there will be people that will come by and it will be worse then than it is now Right. that will try their best to convince you that you can be saved and lost, saved and lost. Well, let me tell you something that you can say to them. Tell them that Jesus Christ died on the cross, that my sin, that our sins might be forgiven. So if this be the case, then Jesus Christ would have to come back to the cross, right. back and forth, back and forth. And so it's impossible for a person to be uh, saved the second time. It don't, Amen. it don't happen that way. And so he said here, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. So we want to talk to you just a little bit about this. And so you say here, he taketh away. Well, there's a, there's a lot of, of uh, scholars and all uh, have looked into the word of Greek and all of this, and they say that it's lifted up. And so I, I have no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, changing the word of God. But anyway, notice this, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So first of all, we've got to have a person that's not bearing fruit. Right. You've got people in the nursing home. You've got people in the hospitals. You've got people that are mentally, have mental problems and all this. They're not bearing fruit. But the thing of it is, they have they've been saved, but they've not they're not bearing fruit. And so this does not mean uh, when it says here that uh, that that they may be that they may be cut off or pruned. But listen, what what he's saying is this morning is that there's none that has that bears fruit has uh, a follower. And right. so here, uh, and then he says here. And every branch in me that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, my Bible says that pruning is called purging. Mm -hmm. our, our purging is called pruning. I'll get it right in a minute. Well, when you purge something, you purge it with water. Mm -hmm. You wash it off, and he's talking about here the uh, the purging is when the when they would come through the vineyards and they would uh, start to uh, try to cultivate it or even to pick up pick vi uh, grapes off of it. If they found a, a a vine and it fell over, they would pick it up and they'd wash it off purge it, and that's what it means, a water, and lay it back up on the vine where that it could continue growing fruit. Mm -hmm. So now we see here that you've got uh, this, this, that the, the, the question is, can we, can we be uh, 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 a branch 
and be taken away from Christ and lost and gone to hell. Mm -hmm. And the question is no. Mm -hmm. You cannot take that you cannot take that soul, that saved soul of regard because if it did the devil would have everyone and Christ wouldn't have Amen. Them. So the thing of it is you need to understand this now because in your lifetime you're going to face this problem and of course I'll tell you what, the devil uses this thing for for his own good and you, you try to work and you try to work and you try to work and you ask people, some some of them that are saved, uh, are you saved? Well, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Well now listen, that's a very, very, very weak string, a line of string to cross because Hoping so and knowing so is two different things. Amen. So this morning, be careful as you're out here in this life because you've got one chance as you go down through this life, and after death, there's no there's no change. Then you can't right. be changed. If you do what the Bible says, and you accept accept the Lord if He speaks to your soul, and you accept you accept Him then you're eternally saved and you're going to be with the Father in heaven. But if you go this whole life and you've worked your fingers to the bone trying to do what God pleases and, and has not got that new birth, when you get before him in judgment day, he, he will say, haven't I did all of these works and done these good things and in, in my lifetime, and he'll say, according to the Bible, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Right. And so what a sad, what a sad thing that's going to be when you stand before God. And you know, everything is over with down here. There's no more, there's no more anything that you can do once you, you're, you're, you're put in that grave. There's nothing else you can do concerning your soul. It's gone to where it's going. Amen. And if it was, if it's, if it's lost, it'll go to a devil's hell. If it's saved, it'll go in the presence of God. And so, listen, there's, there's no, there's no waiting period after death. Amen. So, please, this morning, <coughs> consider this and take it for what it's worth, because uh, you have, you have a lot to gain and a whole lot to lose. So, Amen this morning. All right, so now here he says here in verse uh, 3, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now notice here uh, and I, I want to make this to you, uh, tell you this this this, this is a is, is a uh, 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 it's a parable Get it right in a minute. This is a parable, and uh, uh, boy, devil's fighting this morning. So anyway, this is a parable, and we uh, need to go on, I guess. Um, in verse three, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. Now, when you say abide, it means stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's what the vine is all about. The branches are staying in the in the in the in the vine. Mm -hmm. So now they're all all saved. Now here's a, here's what I was trying to get to you. The one person that is not here, he's talking to these people. Uh, his his disciples. That's what it is because uh, I tried to study a little bit on it, but he is talking to his disciples. And he's not talking to Peter, I mean to, to uh, Judas, because Judas has done gone and killed himself. And here they are observing the Passover. And so Judas is there to observe the Passover. And Jesus says to them, there's someone here that will betray me. Right. And so John, John looks at it, up at him and he's leaning on his breast and says, Father, is it I? 
And then he says, no, it's the one that I dip the, dip, dip the sop into and give it. Now, I want to I wanna bring this to your attention. Uh, in the Passover, there was eating the meat, the lamb, was one of the things that they eat. Here, the Lord God, Jesus, establishes his, uh, 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 his uh, supper mm -hmm. because he says to, to Judas after he had given the sop, which the sop was bread dabbed in a liquid. And of course they had the, the, the lamb there typifying the, the son of God. And he says, do what you will. Listen, he released Judas Iscara into hell mm. right there because Judas could have come and Judas could have done this, but he, he was a devil from the beginning right. according to the Bible and he, there was no chance for him to do it. And so what I'm saying is this morning, uh, we, we, need to, we need to understand all the, all the word and when we take the Lord's Supper, we take wine and uh, eleven bread. And so the I won't get I won't I don't want to chase this right too far, but listen, the Lord's Supper consisted of unleavened bread. And it Amen. will break, it will pop. And you can hear it when you chew it. So when you take the wine, then you take the bread and the bread crackling some people will say that's jesus's bones breaking it represents jesus bone breaking. but if you look jesus in, in, in the old testament it says that there would be a bone broke right of jesus but listen that is his body that he uh that that's that he's crying out <coughs> with when he breaks that bread as he hung upon the cross of Calvary and he died for you and me that we might be saved. So I want to put that into uh, because, uh, like I say, everybody, everybody don't know this. And the ones that do are glad to hear it over. Mm -hmm. But this is something that all the young people need to understand and know what, what it's all about because they are tender, they're easy to let astray, and if, if, if you don't tell them and you keep your arms around them and, and love them and bring them to church, listen, they'll, 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 they'll if they're devil bait, and so be careful. So now, get on to it. Here he says, I am verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branch. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So we see here, this is the, this is the, the truth about the no fruit bearing. He says, he that abideth in me, and I in him. So we see where they were abiding. They were in the vine. And so uh, they weren't lost, and they, they weren't lost after uh, they... Uh, uh, quit fruit giving or, or bearing fruit because listen some people just cannot bear fruit uh, for a certain condition they have or for the knowledge that they don't have and so they think they're doing things when they do this and do that but listen so many times they're wrong and so he says if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Right. So here, here is where, here is where the people get they 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 use this 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 uh, sixth verse here about sending man's souls to hell after they've been saved. And listen, that does not that does not that don't jive here, but. He, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a it's Jesus using this parable to emphasize what 
what goes on uh, with people that uh, uh, are not saved. Right. And, and you know, and uh, so he said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. Now it ain't that it ain't that uh, you know people jumping for Joe and say, oh, I want to wish for this, and I want to wish for that. But listen, what we wish for is joy in the Lord. What we wish for is is things that we definitely need and give Him praise for. But listen, so many people read this and say, I'm going to wish for a car, I'm going to wish for a house, and all, and it don't mean that. Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's. It's the things that really that we need. So he said, uh, he says, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciple. And so the, he, he says after that, you can ask what you will. He says, then herein is it, my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciple. Amen. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. And the Father sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the world on the cross of Calvary. And he shed his blood, and his blood made an atonement, paid our debt for the sins that we'll commit. And if we murder, if we uh, steal if we curse or if whatever God is willing to forgive us because he looks at his son is there with him and he's saying I died for this man and so your sins can be forgiven it don't matter I mean whatever it is your sins can be forgiven unless you're and the Bible says unless you sin against the Holy Ghost what you mean believe there's no God so this morning, don't never get down and out and, and, and think, well, I've did this and I've asked the Lord to forgive me and I, he hadn't forgiven me. Listen, sometimes these things that you do helps you by showing you after a while that you have more patience. Mm -hmm. You have more patience. And so God, don't forget your prayers. But every time you say frog, you don't jump too. So this morning, we need to we need to keep this in mind because so many people get down and out and some of them become not fruitful because they have prayed and they think that the Lord's not going to forgive them. But listen, he wants you to have patience also. And that patience is for talking with others or, 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 or forgiving others. Listen, it takes patience sometimes to uh, talk to a person and tell them about the Lord because the first thing you know, they're, they're spurting out all kinds of stuff. But listen, keep it up and you get to and have the patience with that person because remember, you was there right. once before and Jesus Christ has come and he has died for your sins and so you're you are can be his child or you are his child and so you have a choice there you can and so he says here uh as my as the father has has loved me so have i loved you continue ye in my love now his love was this that he loved you and I enough that he sent his son, Amen. his beloved son, unto the earth and to live upon this earth and to get things done and to die on the cross. Amen. And uh, it was a horrible death, but he did it all for you and for me. And so... We we thank you that the thank you this morning for listening to this, but a little bit more and I'll I'll be through. He says here, if you keep my commandments, now his commandments in the Bible says are not grievous. Amen. If you keep my commandments, 
ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And listen, one of the commandments that Jesus got was that you go down to earth and you die for all those people that are down there. And so he says here, uh, keep my commandments. Love one another. Uh, old Joe down the road, if he's, if he's, you know, he's done everything in the world. Listen, you ought to have enough love in your heart to say, I don't want to see him go to hell. Right. Uh, you know, hell is, hell is a terrible place. And, and terrible don't even describe it. It's a place that you can't get out of. It's a place that you suffer throughout eternity. You can't, you can't, you just, it's all over with. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, you can't die. And so, you know, that fellow down the road there that mistreated you, stole, stole half of your uh, stuff, or, or killed one of your youngins even. Listen, you're still to have a love for that man or that woman and pray for them. And that's what Jesus is, uh, God is saying here. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Right. So here again we see in, in 13, greater love hath, hath no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. And he's telling us this morning just exactly what happened that Jesus Christ came to this earth, laid down his life for us, hung on the cross and died for us, suffered and died for us. But listen, he rose the third day and ascended to the Father. And he's there sitting on the right hand of the Father this morning, making intercessions for you and for me. And 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 he he's taken the blame. He's taken all of the sins upon the upon his on his back when he died on the cross of Calvary. And so your sins are forgiven if you ask the Lord. You, you that's the thing of it. It's it's a thing between you and the Lord, and you need to pray about your salvation because. What a, what a terrible thing it is to, to, to leave this world lost and undone and have to stay in, in a torment for the rest of your life. Listen, this, ye are my friend if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I call you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Amen. What a wonderful scripture. Mm -hmm. I have chosen you. And that's because Jesus came to this world and died. He says, I have chosen you and ordained you are appointed you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Amen. And that your fruit should remain. The fruit that you produce should remain. And that's if it's in a, 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 a barren fruit for a human, uh, as far as telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, it should remain in that man's mind. And he would probably think about it if he never. If he never, if he never makes a decision in the earth and makes a, uh, his soul uh, to trust in the Lord. So he says here that whosoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my Father's name, he, sh he may give it, uh, it to you. These things I command you that you love one another. Amen. All right, that's my lesson this morning. I hope that something has been read uh, that will will encourage you, will strengthen you, will uh, cause you to consider your soul. And if you know that you haven't been saved, 
you need to think upon it, you need to pray about it, and you need to ask your family to help you with it. You need to go to the Lord and pray about it because it's the most important thing. You can have a billion dollars and die and it all, and it, right. ain't, it ain't worth it. It ain't, it ain't gonna help you. Mm -hmm. So, thank you so much for listening to me. Mm -hmm.